Well, you win some, you lose some. And these are my top 10 most disappointing games of 2015. In my opinion. Rock Band 4. Guys, come on, this is Rock Band, and this, well, let's not say it was necessarily boring. It's just, I really did not like the library of songs this game had this time around. I mean, most of them are just pretty much uninspired, and not only that, it really doesn't have any replay value. Just, I didn't really feel like it had the touch, the, you know, the, the grip the last game has gave me. I hope that doesn't sound too wrong, but... Putting that all aside, it really didn't feel like it grabbed me like the previous games did. And probably the most disappointing aspect about the game is that most of the songs you can play, you have to buy through DLC. Yeah. So let's see, uh, how to make an awesome game, but give people the songs that they want while also making a good budget from our game. I know, let's put shitty songs in the library, and then let's make the badass songs for paid DLC. That'll get you and people actually paid for it. Batman Arkham Knight for PC. Now before you guys are confused or anything, this game made my top 10 best games of 2015 list. However, this is just for the PC version. The console version, awesome. The PC version, what the fuck, Rocksteady? Why would you give your, basically your baby, over to this company and give them such a short span of time to create a PC port? Many people are pissed off at Rocksteady for making them release this shitty PC port, but don't necessarily blame them. They basically passed the project along to this really small company to basically do it for them. We did a shitty job because they had no time whatsoever. They rushed it out. Just unbelievable between awful frame rate constant crashes the game even looking like shit during parts infinite loading times and when the game would load it with textures just pop-ins everywhere i mean and oh my lord i'm so tired of companies doing this release your game when it's finished if you have to delay the pc version go ahead and delay it it this was so bad they took it off steam for months, and when they promised that, hey, this is gonna be fixed, don't worry, guess what? Months after its release, when they released on Steam, it still is fucking broken. I, I, I can't even imagine why they'll be looking at this and think, huh, yeah, that, that, that looks good, let's just go ahead and release that, we'll patch it later. Inexcusable. Need for Speed. Now, I'm not much of a racing game person, however, I did want to try this out because I heard they were going to be rebooting the franchise, so I was pretty interested to see how they would do that exactly. But EA, this is not the way to do it. EA, yet again, fucks up another game. So, what did they do this time around? Well, let's see. I mean, the graphics is, are pretty decent, and the customization I thought was really good too, but pretty much everything else sucks. The modes suck. Why are the racing competitions at always at night? Like, are you trying to show off your new light engine? That makes no fucking sense at all. The online when it was released was shit. Granted, a lot of games when they come out, their multiplayer usually does suck at first because the servers are getting overwhelmed at first. However, the multiplayer was basically broken months after it came out, which is inexcusable, unacceptable, and the story was probably the worst part. I could really give two fucks about what's going on. Every single, every single character in the story, I didn't give a shit about. Guys, come on, you, you can't come up with something better than this. So, um, I'll ping you later. Get you all aboard the drift train. Get you all aboard the drift train. Drift train, drift train, drift, 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 drift. Get you all aboard the drift train. Ooh. No. Ugh. Battlefield Hardline. Yet again, another EA title with pretty much subpar gameplay that gets released, and it's basically just another way to hash out a Battlefield game annually, like they're trying to do with Call of Duty now. The funnest thing about this game was the campaign. 
and the campaign wasn't even that good. I mean, once this game came out, it really wasn't that good. It was basically Battlefield 4 with certain maps here and there and a couple new weapons, but that's about it. Really not a whole lot of variety whatsoever. And plus, when the game released, surprise, surprise, Battlefield Hardline had constant crashes on all versions of the game. So you know what gamers did, like just a couple months after this game came out? They said, fuck this, and went back to Battlefield 4. So basically, Battlefield Hardline's multiplayer is, is pretty much dead right now. If, if you can find a, a lobby with, like, I would say eight or more people in the lobby, please let me know. Because there's no reason to go back to this when you have Battlefield 4 and all the DLC for it. There is no point in this game even existing. Potential was there. But, execution... <sighs> Mario Party 10. Well, it looks like the Mario Party series from here on out is just gonna keep being mediocre until they stop making money. This game sold, you know why? Because it has the word Mario on it. Hell, I even tried it out myself. Thankfully, I didn't pay full price for it, I got a pretty good deal for it. But I still played it nonetheless to be able to show it. I thought maybe the developers would have, you know, maybe learned from their mistakes last time. Or not really mistakes, but improve upon what made the Mario Party game so delightful and fun to play. But this is really... If, if you played any Mario Party game, then you don't even need to play this. It's literally pointless to get. I mean, all the, all the fucking mini-games are the same. All the rewards are the exact same. Like, the game even looks the same, it looks like they didn't even bother to up the graphics whatsoever and make any types of changes. It's pretty much Mario Party 7 through 9, just, I basically, you could basically say this is Mario Party 9 DLC, really. It's pretty much the exact same thing, just a couple more little features added here and there. And really, I think the only reason this game exists is just so that Nintendo could put number 10 next to Mario Party to try to, let's see, how possibly long can we make a series before it eventually gets killed off? I don't know, let's keep going, but let's try to crawl along to number 10. That way we could say we released 10 Mario Party games. Nice and even. Yeah, no. <sighs> I'm so tired of companies doing this when it comes to when you release your game, Everything should be in the game and not make you forced to pay for the, pretty much three quarters of the rest of it after the game comes out. And that's Evolve. Come on, guys. This, I mean, the game is fine temporarily. I mean, I can only recommend renting this at best. I cannot even recommend buying this to anybody. Why? Well, let's see. Uh, the game is fucking short as hell. The online multiplayer gets repetitive so fucking quickly, and oh yeah, the story fucking sucks, especially the ending. I, I can't even explain what happens in the ending. The game just cuts and ends. It's like they ran out of money and they just, oh, nope, stop, 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 stop. We have to end the game now, and it just cuts to black and then the credits roll. Oh yeah, and you know the main reason why this game is disappointing? Yet again, with so much fucking paid DLC. Yeah, let's see. They basically released a quarter of a game, and then they, for $60, this game came out at a full price. And then you basically have to pay for the rest of the game with DLC. They even released DLC the day the game came out. And on only top of that, there's multiple season passes! No one should be defending this. There's two fucking season passes! Why are you defending this? I, I have no idea why people defend this. There's no reason to. The paid DLC is bullshit. They should have put that in the game from the get-go. If they did, this game would have had so much more replayability, but they totally just fucked it up. Big time. Well, looks like this series is dead with Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5. I mean, I'll be honest, I had really low expectations for this game, and when this came out, my expectations are even lower, and at this point, I just think the series is dead. Really. I mean, I don't know where to start. Let's see. A terrible release. The game runs like shit. It looks like shit. The character facial animations look like they didn't even bother to fucking make them look detailed or anything. The maps suck. The modes suck. It gets boring so quickly. And when you're playing, you're like, there's 
dozens and dozens of other skating games out there that are way better than this and have way more content to offer, honestly. It's, it's literally pointless to get this game when there's so many better. Hell, check out the Skate series. Those are really good games. Skate 1, 2, and 3, especially Skate 3. There's just so much fucking fun with so much content to deliver. With this, however, it's there's no reason to get it, really. Oh yeah, and plus, it's buggy and glitchy as hell. It's basically like the developers didn't even look at the game, they just wrote some code here and there and slapped number 5 on it and pushed it out the store shelves. That's pretty much what it feels like. Don't get this game, please. Oh man, this kind of really saddens me with Mad Max. Hell, the movie was really good, but the game itself... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, my bad. Like, this game is fucking boring. God, how, how do you get a Mad Max game and make it so fucking boring, I literally get sleepy while playing it. it it's fucking boring. Now, granted, the vehicle combat is pretty fun. I mean, there's a lot of really awesome customization, and the battles of vehicles is pretty exhilarating as well. But what puts me to sleep, and what just kills the game for me, is the fucking ground combat. Uh, it's, it's pretty much like they spent 90% of their time on the vehicle combat, and then 10% with melee and running around and stuff. And plus, I mean, the side missions in this game, they kind of suck. The story, very bland and forgettable. The characters, not that relatable, really. It's kind of a shame because the Mad Max series all has really interesting characters, but this really doesn't. Even Max himself in this game is really bland and boring. And plus, the game doesn't even look that good, which is extremely disappointing because when you have a game that's pretty much an entire world of sand and just this big desert, pretty much, and that's it, you kind of have to make sure it's as detailed as possible, otherwise it's going to look boring and look like the developers are lazy. I was defending this game, saying it looks like a really interesting take on open world games and this and that, but it came out and I got bored of it in just a few days. Come on guys, you can do better than this. Man, I was so hyped for this game, I was like, this has got to look like the most gorgeous game of graphics I have ever seen in my life. The story seems so interesting, I cannot wait to play through this and see what happens, and those fucking weapons look amazing, just everything about this game, I was so hyped leading up to its release. I pre this game, bought it at full price, and I beat it in one fucking sitting. The Order 1886. This, this pisses me the fuck off, like, there was so much potential behind this game, and they just threw it out the window. I was genuinely super excited for this game, and I was telling all my friends, I was defending it. Some of my friends were, were kind of iffy about it, they're like, I don't really know, I mean, the game, I don't know, this one look like it's for me, but I'm like, I, it, I'm defending it. But, and it came out, and it's like, man, what the fuck happened to it? Well, of course, the game looks pretty, so everything you see gameplay-wise, trailer-wise, all of that, the game looks that way. Like, if you think it's a pre run or cutscene from the trailers, no, the game actually looks that way. The game is gorgeous, and the developers have to be commended for how phenomenal it looks. Everything else, though, pretty much sucks. The combat is bland, it's basically just a Gears of War ripoff. The story fucking sucks. It's fucking three hours long. It took me three hours to beat. Three fucking hours. Got no reason to defend it. And there's no multiplayer. It's single player only. In three hours, single player? No. No. You know, sometimes the phrase, I told you so, just doesn't quite say it. The saber comment in this game is like this. Uh, you hit me with your saber? No, not like that. <laughs> this is 
basically what we're doing. That's the Saber Combat in Star Wars Battlefront. We would like to reenact the Saber Combat. Uh, uh, the per person who saw or, or it happens like this. Ready, Saber Combat? It's because you're old, man. <laughs> yeah. Victory! Star Wars Battlefront. Now, hang on, guys, before y'all get pissed off at me. If you like this game, if you think it's the best fucking game ever, awesome. I'm happy for you. If you like this game, go play it. I'm not telling you not to play it. This is my personal opinion on what I think is disappointing and what it didn't live up to my expectations because they were set really high because the previous games before it were extremely good. I personally think anybody that's defending this game has not played the past two Battlefront games that came out 10 years ago. They, I don't think they have because if they played those games and then played this, there's no comparison. The previous Battlefront games had so much content. There were so many fucking maps and Battlefront 2 added way even more than that. The heroes and the villains are really fun to play as. There was a fuck ton of modes and an interesting campaign about the 501st. Galactic Conquest. So much content, you, you can't wrap your head around it and it's you can easily play that game for hours upon end. So much replay value. I still play that game to this day. That's how much content it has. When you look at this, this is why I'm disappointing. There's no campaign to be found. The single player is non-existent. Which is a shame because the game looks gorgeous. I'll give the game one thing and that is the game looks absolutely gorgeous. DICE has to be commended for that and I'm actually really impressed with how well it looks and they did a really good thing trying to take all the roles from Star Wars and importing them into this game. When I was playing through the game, I really did feel like I was in a Star Wars role. They did really good with that. but. There, there's pretty much little content here. The game itself is not horrible. The gameplay that's there is good, but I thought the shooting aspect did get a little bit repetitive for online. I thought if they broke out some kind of single player or Galactic Conquest mode, something like that, it would have given the game way more replay value and pretty much giving the player freedom to do different maps when they want to, kind of like with the previous Battlefront games where we had instant action. You could pick which map you want, which mode you want, and there's so many fucking modes. Galactic Conquest took hours to beat, and that doesn't exist in this game. No Galactic Conquest, there's no Clone Wars Saga whatsoever, it's probably going to be fucking paid DLC, and people are defending that, saying, oh, the Clone Wars DLC, it's going to be amazing, and this and that. I'm like, it should have been in the fucking game. All we have is the Rebel Alliance, and the Galactic Empire. Oh yeah, and there's only a handful of heroes and villains in this game, and they're probably going to release more as DLC that you have to pay for. That's not going to be a free update. This is EA. It's not going to be free. Why people are defending that, I have no fucking idea. Anyone defending that has not played the previous Battlefront games. I mean, Battlefront being pretty much my cherished childhood memory as one of my most favorite games of all time. It's really up there with some of my most favorite games to play ever, and in my opinion, the best Star Wars games ever created, period. But with this, is super underwhelming. It's like they created not even half of a game, they created just this little bit of a game, and then they're going to release it, and then they're gonna give out some fuck tons of DLC that we have to pay for later down the road. That's not acceptable, guys. Look at the content in this game, and then look at the amount in the previous Star Wars Battle for games that came out a decade ago. It's 10 years later, and this game costs more, and there's less content. There's no reason to defend this at all. And again, it is really a big shame because this game was actually really hyped because Star Wars The Force Awakens was coming out, so EA played it smart. They knew if they released this game like right before or around when Force Awakens was coming out, they'd make a good chunk of money for this game. And to no one's surprise whatsoever they did, but I know a lot of people who are genuinely refusing to buy this game just for that reason. And I kind of have to agree with them. And I mean, honestly, if EA sometime down the road releases a, 
pretty much a special edition for the game where all the DLC is included and if it costs less if, they, if a special edition comes out like a year later from now all DLC is in it and you don't have to pay any additional fees for it and there's so much content in it and if the game is like 30 bucks or less I would definitely get it. But for 60 bucks and on top of that paid DLC hell no hell no and there's a $50 fucking season pass, and they haven't even told anyone what the season pass is going to include. A $50 season pass, and no one has any fucking idea what's in it, on top of the 60 bucks you already have to pay for the game. Guys, you want to know how much little content this has? Microsoft actually reached out to EA and they said, Look, is there any way we can just try to push the price down, you know, for the Xbox Live Marketplace? And, and they agree, they somehow came into an agreement. This game, like a month or two after it came out, costs less on Xbox Live Marketplace than it does in retail. That just shows you right there how little content it is. There's no reason to defend this at all. I mean, again, if you like the game, awesome, but you can't defend it because of these reasons. You really can't. At best, this is a rental, which, I mean, it's Battlefront. It's Star Wars. Star Wars! This should have been an amazing game, but... Of course we're gonna get some more sequels that are gonna be hashed out at the last minute and they're gonna release little content with them. You know how we stop this, guys? How we stop games like this being released? Don't buy it. Period. EA doesn't give a fuck what your complaints are. If you bought the game, they could give two fucks what you think. I didn't buy the game. That's my way of giving the finger to EA and saying, hell no, this is bullshit. Put in more content in your games. Speak with your wallets, guys, not with your mouths. Well, guys, that does it with my top 10 most disappointing games of 2015. If you agree with my list, cool. If you disagree with my list, cool. I'm always open to your guys' thoughts and opinions. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. You can go ahead and let me know what your most disappointing games were. And thanks again for watching, guys. As always, be sure to subscribe. Ow.